Before they disbanded in 2009, Noel Gallagher was the guitarist of what is probably my favourite band of all time, Oasis. During the 90s, Oasis were, all but officially, the objective culmination of Core Britannia, known for their banging anthemic tunes, unadulterated hubris, and, well, doses of gritty realism and generally being mad for it. I will not attempt the Mancunian equivalent. <laughs> After the release of their second album, What's the Story, Morning Glory, in 1995, they were indisputably the biggest band in Britain and arguably the biggest band all around the world. Where could it all go wrong from here? Well, some might say it had something to do with their third album, which didn't really live up to the billing. However, another contributing factor was this, and if you are listening to this and can't see anything, it is a picture of Noel Gallagher meeting Tony Blair at 10 Downing Street. And this is when Noel, of course, called on the stars to fall by accepting an invitation from Tony Blair to celebrate Labour's landslide victory in the 1997 general election at 10 Downing Street. Mm. And as you can see, Noel looks quite pleased to be in so, the company of So Mr. this is Blair. someone else whose uh, career starts to go downhill after a party in Downing Street. His, well, not so much his career, but I would say Oasis's um, status as a band. It was right. really bad PR for Oasis. Mm. Their core appeal was that they were just a bunch of working class lads from Manchester who, well, well formed a band because they mm -hmm. had nothing else to do with their time. They had an anti-establishment, very much anti-Eastern, you could even say anti-Southerner image, right. given the comparisons with Blur, um, which, as you can imagine, this caused their gritty image to slide away somewhat. Um, not that Noel really cared that much about it, but anyway. In an interview with Matt Morgan on his podcast, Noel revealed that he has completely and utterly had enough of the Labour Party. Hooray! Hooray! And what you're about to hear is word porn. Okay. Yes. Noel Gallagher brands the Labour Party an effing disgrace. I bet the, I bet the Independent were weeping as they typed this up. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can almost see the tears on the screen. <laughs> but yes, Noel says, I effing hate the Labour Party. They're an effing disgrace. What they've become now, a disgrace. They've betrayed the working classes. Oh, man. They've betrayed ordinary people. Mm -hmm. And they've allowed this shower to run the country for however long they've effing run the country. He continued, the modern Labour Party is middle class... Um, Clint's, who effing hates at the working class. They hate them. It's as simple as that. I haven't voted for years. Anyone in their right mind who does take part in that circus is an effing idiot. They are not capable of running an after-show party. I should start a new party called the after-show party. It would be great. Well, has Labour betrayed the working classes? Yes. All you have to do is look at what they've been prioritising. Mm -hmm. um, well, the fact that they have the audacity to preach about women's rights without even agreeing on what a woman actually is is one such example. Mm. Um, their continuous lobbying for the teaching of, I don't know, gender queer the gender queer theory of sexuality to young children mm -hmm. and proactively facilitating a culture of national loathing for the UK's heritage. Yeah, none of this really sounds like standing up for the working man, does no, it? No, it does not. And in fact, they hate the very roots of British socialism, which is what a Scruton rightly argues, I would so, mm -hmm. is rooted on a class struggle against imperial market forces based on a love for one's country and in virtue of protecting the character of that country they were lamenting mm. the loss of something mm -hmm. they were almost they found themselves almost in unison with the conservative critics of neoliberalism that they felt their home was being encroached upon by something instrumental something vulgar mm. and of course well Noel has rightly identified that Labour is now not that party it is not that party of defending the uh, I suppose the wholesome roots of being working yep. class defending working class interests it is the party of us I, I suppose middle class intellectuals really mm. um but yes what they are saying is that everything that britain has built and done is racist imperialistic and that the traditional working class are an implicit part of this because well they're they're white basically mm. and as the labor party are doing now that is insulting enough to qualify as a betrayal really of the working class yeah, i think and that's I think very fair absolutely right so yes they have betrayed the working class they betrayed the working class because they hate them they hate their very existence it's pretty much antithetical i would say to england in every mm. single way so yes uh no in short is perfectly justified in seeing labor as a joke and as a party that is utterly unsalvageable and therefore unelectable However, he's actually been saying this for a while, okay. somewhat somewhat under the radar. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was particularly but about Jeremy Corbyn. Is that under the radar because he's been doing it quietly or because no one's been reporting what he's saying? Because said? no one's really been reporting it. Interesting. Yes. Uh, well, at least not, not many people have been paying attention. Um, but anyways, you can see the independents did pay attention to it. And he, he called Jeremy Corbyn Captain Fishy. Okay. 
Mm. I went as far as saying that he would rather reform Oasis than see lunatic Corbyn elected. <laughs> There's some strong <laughs> words there. Take it from me. This is a huge statement mm. from Noel Gallagher. And this mm-hmm. is for anyone who doesn't know about Oasis. He's been under pressure to reform Oasis since they disbanded, pretty much entirely because of Liam. Mm-hmm. He was even offered something along the lines of £50 million pounds to do so. I'm wow. not sure if that's correct, but it was something ludicrous. That is quite a And he, he rejected that mm-hmm. because he, it just didn't persuade him. He's currently enjoying a very successful solo career Good. with his band, the, the High Flying Birds. So getting back Getting the band back together with his brother, who he famously doesn't really get on with, is not an attractive proposition at all. But it seems he'd rather do that for free than see Jeremy Corbyn become Prime Minister. Um, But anyway, according to The Independent, Noel said that Corbyn is an effing student debater, effing captain, fishy, craggy old effing donkey, (laughs) F off, and described Shadow Home Secretary Diane Abbott as the face of effing buffoonery. (laughs) <laughs> that's quite is, strong is, is Noel Gallagher t- has Noel Gallagher all this time been the living embodiment of North FC I think so it would be nice if he could vary his swear words up a yes. bit but then there is a certain power to the endless yes. repetition of the F word mm. this is supersonic to hear yeah. let it out Noel go let it out <laughs> he goes on they talk pipe smoking communist nonsense do you know what I mean thank you Noel for that I think the role of any politician in the world is to be forward thinking and modern and contemporary looking forward he told the Manchester Evening News Mm -hmm. and make no mistake in this country we need someone and it ain't him and it's never been anyone from the Conservative Party I Mm -hmm. think you it's very hard to argue against that really yeah 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 well certainly in recent years can you think of any politician who's really inspired you not well, really. Listen to an MP who said, "Oh yeah, he's got the right thing." Not really in the last fifty years. No, no. I mean Mar- I, Margaret Thatcher doesn't inspire me in the mm-hmm. slightest. They, they, David Cameron was nearly as deplorable as Tony Blair. Mm. To read, Theresa May was politically impotent. Mm. Really, Boris Johnson is arguably worse, mm-hmm. um, even though he's somewhat m- more charming when, he, without having the duties of being a prime minister, mm. that isn't really a conservative politician in 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 this country. At least who has been prime minister, who I think has actually been a force for good in the UK. Certainly not a prime minister but even when we're talking about back benches a lot of the time you find someone will say something and you think oh that's quite right hmm. and then if you look them up you find that that's just one glimmer of positive thought in yes. a whole mess of complete incomprehension of what's happening yeah to this and then you and then you look at their voting record and mm-hmm. see they're not actually actually acting on the virtues that they no. espouse for again for political reasons mm-hmm. because they, they, they don't want to lose the the uh what, what was it lose the whip mm. um and ultimately just want to toe the party line because mm-hmm. the, well a, a lot of well, it's the easy way it's the path of least resistance if you tow the party line you're in for a good career good opportunities yeah let's not let's not kill us a lot of people are drawn to politics because they're motivated by the idea of having power yes and that that, there are that that has a that's a positive coercive force to an to an extent because you want people who actually want to change things Mm. but that does attract unfortunately career politicians Mm -hmm. such such as those who end up having no consistent and especially in the current system where we have such an enormous political machine behind each party i find that it's very difficult for anyone to really escape that well to really mm. get into politics and be a successful politician without being a career politician who's just yeah. worked out how to manipulate and game the system yeah so. and it's so no was absolutely right mm. and he, he rightfully well, f- feels almost very betrayed really by the party that i think many that people in this be. country do when i talk to taxi drivers and things you'll be mm. amazed how angry people are when oh, they get yes. the opportunity to have a conversation in private yeah goodness me yeah and these they're more often than not at least from my experience the ones who actually like hate the tories the most but nonetheless i actually see and say the things that a lot of people are too afraid to actually say to those who show us they are very much almost a piece of the mechanism themselves mm-hmm. but anyway um so Noel goes on to say that, well, the two extremes um, are that the Labour Party don't respect people who are aspirational. Mm. The Conservatives don't ex- don't protect the vulnerable. He he likes New Labour and Tony Blair because he, he struck a balance. Mm. Um, but there's actually a lot of depth in that statement. I don't mm. know if he came up with it himself or got it from somewhere else, but that's quite profound. It, it, it is. And he, he's somewhat misguided in, in, in this view in many ways. But mm. he thinks that New Labour had that right. Mm. And then and then when he says 9-11 happened and here we are, and of course there's no question yeah, I, that did disrupt the project somewhat. But I don't w- think 9-11 really diverted Tony Blair from his course. Uh, not re- not really, but I suppose the legacy that he left was very much. I mean, had that not happened, we'd be covering what he did. Mm-hmm. And um, I suppose 
just look at his general policies in a completely different way mm-hmm. as in he's he's now almost tied tied into this um yeah but i would argue he was interventionist before he sent troops into um well into the balkans and mm-hmm. so on uh, yeah. with the yugoslavian crisis and uh, so he was interventionist we know he was quite fond of using the military as it was a, a tool he had to play with mm-hmm. um he was very europhile um, and all oh, of the internal doubt. structural changes that he made in this country, which we are having to deal with now, mm. none of them really had much to do with 9-11. The only two legacies of that that I can see are Iraq and Afghanistan. Mm. And to be honest, the actual impact of those on the infrastructure of our country, our society and our culture are quite limited, even though they're very prominent, True. obviously, geopolitically. So I would argue that, uh, I, I think I agree with you, that uh, scapegoating 9-11 for the, the failure and the catastrophe of new labor is a mistake. Yes, a hundred percent. But he gets the appeal of new. He, he gets right. the appeal of it, and this this is why so many conservative voters actually did vote for them, and why the why the Sun actually endorsed them historically. Mm. They were a political project that saw the labour movement accept private ownership and wealth accumulation as legitimate extensions of human freedom, whilst seeing like a social mobility and sustaining a social safety net to ensure that the very poorest did stay above the poverty the, pro- the poverty line. Mm. But what no, of course, isn't is isn't seeing is that. Um, for all, at least for a while, Blair, Alistair Campbell, Barbara Roche, Peter Mandelson, at least in their youth, were all part of that communist sympathising yeah. Oxbridge middle class that he's criticising. Mm-hmm. But despite arriving at more centrist positions later on, of course, for years they were unashamed bourgeois, bohemian, champagne socialists. Yeah, but, yeah, he's also not seeing, um, I suppose, the, the neoliberal part of um, of New Labour's ideological affiliation ideological directions which has a lot to do with the woke zeitgeist that we're currently experiencing now i don't have time to go into that sure. sadly um but n- nonetheless I-, I get his core points and i mm. don't think he's in- he's entirely wrong at all mm-hmm. um, but, but he seems to be voicing what many people are thinking and saying in private yes yeah but anyway little by little no has gradually has been gradually recognizing <laughs> that a contempt for the working class <laughs> and its values has become an endemic part of the labor party and he very much saw this in the labor party's treatment of brexit yep. which again he's not covered very much no nope. so talking about the referendum in an interview on radio x in 2019 he deemed it a pile of s and called uk politicians a disgrace for not delivering on the result he said that whilst he personally personally have repu- would rather have stayed in the European Union and didn't vote on the ma- on the grounds that he didn't feel personally qualified to make such a decision on the UK's future. Mm-hmm. He thought it was a disgrace that those um, supposedly representing members of the working class acted in contempt of their constituents. Yeah. He said, I think it's a stupid backward step that the country is taking, saying that the majority of the people democratically who democratically voted for it, that they've well, they've got to see through it now. But the mm. politicians are trying to, um, to make that not happen. They're an effing disgrace. The politicians and that, I mean, most politicians anyway are a disgrace the ones in england have not covered themselves in glory over the last two years no um that that's only a snippet of what he says mm. if, if, we, if we move on to the next but he's actually gone as far as calling ramona's fascists okay and he's not in t- entirely misguided in saying this mm-hmm. um because the ramona's of course just wouldn't stop crying their hearts out <laughs> to the point where <laughs> yeah they are completely and utterly just <laughs> anyway he hmm. described the, the only the only thing that's worse than the four who voted for Brexit, at least in his words, was the rise of the Clint trying to get the vote overturned. Right. Yes. So while he wanted to stay, um, well, of course, he wanted, he wanted to continue advocating that we should never have um, have left in the first mm-hmm. place, perhaps never even had the vote. Yeah. He called the antics of some of the Remainers as, well, frankly, a disgrace, arguing that people trying to get a vote overturned was fascism straight up. Mm-hmm. These are his words, fascism straight up. Um, and his comments were in response to the fact that he was called a um, actually called a Nazi so, by some of this clan. So his um, his criticism here does it mm. come from the fact that he thinks Remainers were trying to denigrate the working class? Is that where it comes yes. from? Okay, so, yes. So it's that it's and it's also from the fact that they're seeking to overcome overturn the democratic process because they've decided that they're right. Yeah, there is, there is in effect something implicitly conservative in his view because he's mm. saying that the the outcome that you don't that enacting an outcome that you don't like is um is less important than the process that delivers. Yeah, that. he's so valuing we, the process. We could okay. Fair. Yes, precisely. So you, you you could actually see he's um argue that he's kind of placing himself in a Fabian like position, mm-hmm. um, and, and that the the working class has some kind of um kind of epistemic advantage in the things that are that are going wrong and we should perhaps be more receptive to those people mm-hmm. but ultimately that the very fact that you have a process that that allows for that is enough justification for um for upholding shall we say 
an outcome that perhaps doesn't but that isn't a, immediately beneficial to that working class yeah and there's an idea here as well i think that um if the working class is to have any kind of protection or any say in politics, if it's not to be trampled by mm. uh, the decisions of their betters, the upper classes and so on, uh, then that will only be achieved through having a strong process which is followed because the ones who are able to break the rules and change things are almost always the upper classes, not yes. the lower classes. So that's prob that's another part of that debate. Yeah. And I think what he, who he has in mind are the likes of, well, James O'Brien, Mm. Probably, I mean, he probably has Tony Blair in mind as mm -hmm. well here. I mean, he wasn't as insufferably insulting as as James O'Brien was repeatedly. Mm. But it's it's this, this idea that because you cannot, I, I suppose, deduce in rationalistic principles mm. why someone should leave, that that somehow undermines the um, the decision to do that. Mm -hmm. As in, again, implicit in that is the idea that people are. Are attached to certain things, certain practices, certain values, not necessarily because they, they've worked it out rationalistically for themselves as a matter of hours of study or whatever, mm -hmm. but because, for, for example, that, that they, they see more value of being a, see, a free, self-determining citizen on their own soil and actually having some sort of dem some sort of say on the affairs of their country yeah. than having materially better conditions, even though that arguably isn't even true, mm. um, under foreign rule. Yeah. And the likes of James O'Brien are arrogant to think enough that their epistemic position somehow transgresses that view. Mm -hmm. And I think that 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 that's what he finds contemptible. It's amazing. People say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing, but mm -hmm. having a little more education or a little more knowledge than everyone else, um, people or or even just a platform, these brainlets like James O'Brien end up in the position where they seem to think they can just dictate everything. Mm. They think they have this divine wisdom which I entitles know. them to dictate the future on behalf of everyone else, and it is just insufferable. I absolutely hated it when he used to ask, "Well, which law do you, which Lord do you hate the most? Yeah. Can you justify why that is?" I mean, he he knows perfectly well that it's a legitimate position to hate where those laws are derived, mm. rather than actually abstract where they're going or what their evidence is yes. before your eyes. But are you really required? To to name the law chapter and verse to have a legal discussion about something in order to say you don't like where the country's going. Well, the James O'Brien, that's, that's the, how the yeah, process should it's, be. It's rhetorically effective. Yeah. It's a good debating strategy, but it's incredibly bad faith, I think. Yes, it is. So in any case, no, I would say don't look back in anger, but we're dreadfully glad that you did. I cannot wait to hear your new music whenever it's released or whenever it comes out. So please make an appearance on TV and espouse these views at some point. It would be hilarious. And... Yes. Uh, I suppose Happy New Year to all our viewers. If you enjoyed that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as this epoch that Carl and Bo did together on Saturnalia and the history of Christmas. But if you'd like to find out what else is coming out on the website, you can always follow us on getter.com with lotuseaters underscore com being the at. Thank you and goodbye. Mm -hmm.